go to and then it has its styling for button primary it has different styling for secondary for example let me let's change the class here yeah it'll be different color but we we can override all the styling by just targeting the names of this so if we go ahead here and say 18.primary update the background color and uh, pay some hexers to give you guys an example of how you can overwrite all this like bootstrap styling and then we'll also update same color would be like border color here um, it is updated let's add some padding to our header as you notice this is like right next to each other so let's change that to add a padding we don't need to define styling we can just use uh, react bootstrap class name P is for padding, so this will, and then three would just add like a little bit of padding around it. As for the navigation bar, let's add some shadow since our board will also be white, so we need some way to like differentiate that. We can just target nav bar, and I'm just gonna paste the dimensions for the shadow. All right, now that we have that, let's move back to our board component and um, start displaying data over there. First, let's uh, make some changes to like um, board container itself, like here. So add the class name. I'll add some um, styling here. This is little bit padding at the top as you can see we need that full height display flex and then flex column just because we want to display each section for status as like let's say like columns next thing we're gonna bootstrap rows so import row. strap Inside this row, let's give it a title to our board using h1, let's just say project title. And let's create a container where we're going to place our sections for our like tasks. So board container name for it and I'm styling this will make sure the inner components are displayed just realized that code might be a little smaller um, hopefully I just zoomed in I totally forgot to do it uh, in the beginning of the video so sorry about that but hopefully that's better but yeah let me know in the comments if um, this is still small so yeah, so this will make sure that it takes out the whole like width of the parent container. And inside here, let's take our data here. As you remember, data contained uh, this object, which was tasks. So we're going to check if data exists for, and if it does exist, then we're going to map the tasks. So data dot tasks for now let's just oops oh. display the task title and we need um, return statement here
Okay, so we have our one task displayed here. Next, what we'll do is we'll let's like create task component that will um, each task properly using like the title, description, and then the option to like edit and add new tasks. Go to components, create a new file, name it task component. Import React. For this one, we'll also need a um, use state, so let's also import that. And we're gonna make use of some of the bootstraps um, elements like card, form, and button. Let's create the component itself. So it's a functional component and over here we would have to indicate the type of the props. So just because task, um, so this will be accepting task as props, right? So just because task is something uh, that we might need in multiple places, the best thing to do here is to declare its um, type globally. So, and the way this is done is using um, like types folder in TypeScript and then giving the file extension d.ts. So with that, let's create a new folder, name it types. And then inside here, create a new file, name it task.d.ts. So this should be like uh, imported everywhere. So to go back and look at the schema, I always reference schema because we don't want to have any like type mismatches. So from this fields, the ones that we would be passing to task components would be only like few of them. So we're gonna select that to declare type. We declare it as interface. I usually use interface and task uh, type interchangeably. Uh, name of the type, then we say title, which is of type string, description, string as well, this string, and then status, and then optional fields do have this question mark. So in here we don't have to import this anymore, as it would be available already. So here we indicate task. And inside here we can do this structuring of the fields. Turn it, we're gonna create a fragment and then so that we don't forget later we're going to export it. Inside here let's create card, give it a class name. and define its body, which for now would just be um, the title of the task. Oh wait, it's not RC, it's React. <laughs> okay, so this should solve. Index is declared, but its value is never read. Oh, 
Index does not exist on. Okay. Oh, I think this was by accident. Yeah, I do not need the index yet. And let's import this into the body. This is from components folder. Yep. And then here, instead of returning this one, we're going to return task component. And declare its fields. So this is rare because it says the type has been implicitly any, but we can just because we created that task type previously, we can also use that here. So yeah, that solved the problem. Okay, let's Okay, you can see our card here. Now let's update a little bit like the styling of the card. Map the styles file. And I'm just gonna paste some of the styling that I have for this. So just adding some like color, box, shadow, cursor, pointer, because we'll make this like as a button, it will be clickable, we're gonna have a model, um, and then the hover state. Now let's go back to the board and create some sections for our like different statuses. Then create new variable name sections define its type which is going to be array of just a strings and similar to what like jira has it would be backlog maybe in progress if you have views i think it's the kanban Board that does it, if I'm not mistaken. And then each section we're going to create a new component that would hold the sections and then this component would be mapping the tasks inside. And then this would be used as components title. So, yep, let's open components folder, new file. Board section. Import React. Let's do use state as well. And here, let's declare the props that it will be accepting this function so if you usually don't have the type of props that it's going to be used in other components it's my suggestion would be just to declare like interface inside the component file like we're doing here so this would be title string then we're going to have tasks this would be array of the task type that we created previously 
and that's it for now. Create the components, indicate type of props. We can also do this structuring here again, so it will be just title and tasks. For now we can have a fragment and first task component here. And then so there's two options that can happen here. So board could be empty, but it would like still this get displayed on the page. And um, it could be filled with tickets. If it's just empty, then we display immediately like the add task part. If it's if it has tickets, we do display this like tasks first and then the add task button. So for now, let's just uh, create a container which is going to be displayed in any case and then after that uh, we could add this conditions that I mentioned so import column we're going to need a button card and I need form for the model later and then container from bootstrap So medium would be total of four um, sections. So we're gonna declare each one with just the three um, class name flex. And then the the board we're gonna create like rows so we can display the columns inside. Um, now let's give it a header a flex again flex row and we want items to be displayed in the center here is where we're going to display the title set the margin to auto pass the title also want to use like a plus sign on the corner to add the tasks in the header if you want to add the task in that specific section for that I'll be using this library it's called um, react Font Awesome. This is the library that I'll be using the Font Awesome for React. So I'm gonna install this package actually in here. So the way this works is, is that you can explore icons. You can type it in here. We'll be using oops like a plus sign and then you press on any icon you like and then it gives you the name so FA plus if you want to start using icon there's also like documentation for this one this is not for this documentation is not for react this is just for like plain HTML but I'll yeah show you how to out oh, here so yeah, in React you can uh, so import font awesome at the top and then put the name of the icon inside the icon and then and then call it here. So. 
You can also like pass um, styling in line. Okay, so I'm just gonna update the color. This is probably complaining of the type, but we can also do this maybe. Yeah, let's see if this works. If not, we'll try the other way. And then let's have a container for the tasks, like wrapper itself. And then if the tasks exist, in that case, we'll map them. So task would be of type task, and then let's pass the index, which would be type number. Return task. You can already, since we already created the task component in the board and we passed all the props, we can just copy what we have in here and format it. We can remove the test component from board itself and let's just display like import board section at the top and display it to make sure that it works. anymore. Oh, we never did export default. Okay, export default or section. All right, this should be fine. Here, board section. Let's give the first one backlog tasks let's just pass it all the tasks we have um yep yeah, that's it for this one oh we had to install all the modules for i thought it was just one since i was using one but i guess not okay let's go ahead copy this in here Paste it in. Another thing we need to do is that in case the um, GraphQL query is still loading, see we have this loading and error indications. Um, so in case it's loading, we want to um, let the user know uh, if it's loading. Otherwise, if we pass this data here and then data is undefined yet, and this will throw an error that we, we can find tasks of undefined. And then the way we do that is that for the return statement, so if loading, then return, oops, then return. And then if error return error. It's not wrong for users, but easier. Um should be easier to debug for us as well. Well, 
standard and here instead of just displaying one section we're gonna map all the sections so sections dot map which is a string and then index which is number Another thing that we want to do is that we want to each section display the task that belongs to the section actually. So we want to, and then instead the tasks uh, object that we have here displays all the tasks. So what we want to do is want to filter the data before we pass it to the section component. So filter data would be again array of tasks. So and then if so data exists then we're gonna take tasks that data then filter it each task is of type task and we'll return if task that status equals to the section and then if like the data doesn't exist we just return empty array section will be empty and then we cut this from here paste it in here and then instead of data.tasks we pass filter data all right so in this case we don't expect any tasks to show up just because none of them or well, we only created one task in the database if you remember and then this one task does not have any status assigned so obviously it would not show up on any section okay so let's go back to our prism database and add some tasks that actually do have um, statuses so we can display them on the section so go to task add record um, okay title User is empty for now, and then status backlog. Let's do another one. I think I forgot what other sections we had, so it was okay. Here we go. All right, now that we have that, let's uh, create like an add button so we can add new tasks. I just realized this is throwing error because it actually is supposed to be an object and see how um, it needs to be imported. So now that I selected it, I think this will import at the top. Okay, if you, um, your extension didn't do that, this is what you need to import at the top. So the um, add button in when the section is empty and then when we have tasks as the end of the task, it's, it has uh, a little bit different styling. So that's why we're going to create components. I mean, we're going to create a conditional statement in here. So let's see, in first case, let's say we do have actually tasks. So tasks in length 
why does it is more than zero In this case let's give it a class name add wrapper we're gonna add on click later for this one I would also use Want awesome like the same add icon. Add some styling. Just a little bit of uh, padding around. Oh, this actually needs to be in quotes. And both like the value as well. Just the text for the bottom. We should have one section that does not have any tasks. Oh, um, oh yeah, I always forget to put <laughs> return statement inside the map for some reason. All right, this should show up here. Okay, so if there are tasks, then this add task button will appear after it. Um, if there's no tasks, let's create uh, also add task button for this one. Yeah, let's first actually. So where were we up here? And then if tasks that length is equals equals zero so we have no tasks we'll almost create like um same thing but just with the different class names so let's actually wrap this in wrapper because we kind of wanted to take out the whole um, height So let's name it is empty display flex flex column. Okay, here it is. Let's just update styling so we can tell this apart. Going back to our style file. So I'm just going to paste the styling for the... This is the add wrapper like button basically. And then is empty styling would be a little bit different as I mentioned. So this is what I have here. So yeah, as you can see, this has this linear gradient, it has full height, although the button itself is only this one, and then this is how it, the others look like. Now let's actually add the functionality to add task. This will open a model in which we input, we put task information, and after that we just submit the task so going back to components react you stay because we need to um save what user inputs in the state let's import again some bootstrap elements button card we also need form container and then this is going to be model so model of course and later on we'll also need to import uh, 
like Apollo Chris just because we're gonna once we add the actual task it's gonna be a query to add it into the database so constant add task model So for now let's leave the props empty and then we would definitely do need like props later on. We'll create model and then model.header And then we want to include close button in here too if they want to exit out. Then there's... For this one I'm just following like a bootstrap example. Let's say create a task. Let's move on to the body which will be our form. Let's create, um, so this function is going to be fired when model is submitted. Let's create it for now and then we can add the use query later in here. This is going to take on event. We always do event prevent default to prevent user from like refreshing and resubmitting the same form. And create form elements. For this one we also need title, description, status for the ticket. So just creating form groups, labels, and controls. Let's give this group a class name. So they have a little bit of margin amongst themselves. So yeah, let's copy and paste this and fill it in. First one is title. Description. And then assign to. As in this would be like a select of where we assigning this ticket to. In terms of like the control itself, so in order for us to like hold the values as user types in, we need to create the state of this um, three form input. So let's go ahead and do that. Task title set and all of them would be empty, obviously.
type his text in for the title as well as for the label as for the value here we're gonna have the state for the title which is task title and then here we have task description yeah As for the this one, we have assign to. This is actually not a control. This is select because we'll, we're going to have a drop down options here. So let's update that, and then we need to add like on change functions. So when user input changes, we also need to update the state accordingly. So set task title the target the event target value. Same for this one, just the description. Okay, another thing that we need, actually two things. First one would be the button so that we can actually submit this form. Let's do variant primary submit. And then for this one to fire function over here, we need to indicate type as submit. Don't forget that. And the next thing that the model from React Bootstrap needs, it needs to know like when this would be show and then you pass um, if it's true or false. In this case, we're going to name this show model and then on hide. So when it should hide, it's like handle close. This would be passed from the parent because parent would be controlling whether this model is open or not because we click on a button somewhere on the parent. In here, let's destructure them. Show model, handle close, and let's declare types for this to show model is a boolean and handle close as a function which actually does not return anything so that's why we put oops right in here let's go to board section import this components task model and then like I mentioned uh, the parent component which in our case is port section is to manage whether or not like the task uh, model should be open or not so we need to save this data in the state let's name it show model and then set show model By default, it should be false. And you can add the model anywhere in the component, doesn't really matter as long as it's inside like the main component, just because it still gets displayed in the middle of the screen. Um, so show model is show model handle 
close on handle close we need to actually let's create that function so for now we're just gonna set show model to false again and then closing tab oh and then let's create another function that's actually gonna show the model so handle show set show model to true and then we'll call this function from our like add button so let's add on click okay let's put our model to test now refresh oh that's the other one okay good um we also need to because remember we created two styled um add buttons so we need to add this for both okay Yep, so right now we don't have submit function, so let's um, put that, but if we type this, this is working, this is empty, we don't have any users now, so we didn't pass any values. Let's work on the submit function, create that um, query. So we can use our GraphQL schema as a reference. every time so like adding on to the db would be a mutation and then in this case we have this create task mut mutation that takes in all these fields that the task has so we can just um, use this one let's create a new like constant here where we would store the query name it create task mutation gql tag and then it is of type mutation create task It's taking in ID and then here we have to uh, define the types of variables that we are passing. The variables that are required have this like exclamation mark next to it. The rest are optional. Okay, let's actually make this bigger. So we just named this one to uh, declare the types and inside we're using the function from our schema. And we're saying that ID would be the ID variable that we passed and the same for the rest. And these are the fields that we want to return. Okay. 
And then for the mutation itself, we can use use mutation query, which is also kind of like a hook similar to, to query one that we used previously. So we give it a name and then it also has this like three data they are like three objects that it returns. Name of the mutation. We're also going to use uncompleted function on this one because when the data has been submitted, we do want to clear out the form, which is like a best practice so we're going to set task this oops what did I do so back to their initial states And let's now add the create task function inside our submit function. So we call create task and this is how we pass variables by declaring variables and then we're passing all this data that we stored in our state that would be title, not this one. Status would be so for the status we do need to also pass which category like the board is so just the name so let's say board let's add board category to our props and then this would be the string basically like name of the section So this would be board category. We're not passing user ID for now. And then after this is done and it's submitted, let's just close the model. Tag is incorrect here, it should be like it should wrap the whole form. So here instead, do board section and make sure we are passing this board category in props. Yes, it highlighted us, it for us because we're not. So board category would basically be the title of the section. Okay, we can change the type of this to string. Where's this? Yeah. Here. Let's test our submit function. We add a task, task two. Test and submit. So the network request it went through. We don't see any errors here in the network tab in Inspector, like um, Dev Tools. But as you can see, it it did not show up here. If we refresh the board, um, then we're able to see the test too. But the so this the reason it happens this way is how GraphQL um, treats cache. 
when the page loads, it makes a request to the API data loads. But then when we close the model, the data is not updated. We're gonna uh, fix that. First, we're also going to add another model to update the existing task, which would be similar to add task. It would just have the information about the task already filled out. And then if user updates it, we're gonna like submit that and it, we're gonna use a different mutation. So let, let's um, do that right now. To realize that I never, I hard coded the backlog somewhere and I never updated the names because these are like different sections. So let's go back to that. It's probably in the board section uh, when we are calling, not the board section, but the board itself. When we are calling, yeah, see, instead of title here, it should be section. Yeah, so that way we're going through this array. All right, my bad. Um, so for the update model, we're going to actually store that in the task component. Let open this up on the right because it's going to be very similar to the add task model. So go import model from here. Copy this as well. Let's see if I can make this even bigger. All right. So our muta mutation for the update would be similar to this one. But instead of um, create, it would just be update. And then in schema, we already do have the update function. So if we take a quick look here, it's um, update task. So let's update this. Also rename our local variable. update task mutation and then check um, if the values are correct so id title description status user id okay it has and then we do want to return the same fields i guess we're also going to add here a delete option. So let's add the query for that one as well. So delete oh. mutation. For this one, we need to only like pass one uh, ID, which would be like one variable, which would be the ID itself. And then um, just because it only needs like one variable to f go through the list and then find uh, that specific task. And this field is required. Delete task ID, we're passing our uh, ID. It might return on ID of deleted one as well. Okay. As for this one, we will need inside here, since we're going to have a model, we'll also need like same states as we have in actually board section to manage whether model is open or not. So let's paste this in here also for like same functions to open and close the model. So here. Let's add our mutations. First one would be update task. Which also returns data loading and error all 
Invitation. Copy the name. Then Regular test, we don't really need to return the data. We're just going to delete one um, task from the data and then update the state. Now let's go ahead and copy the model and then update what we like the fields. So this would be model. This is going to go after the we can put it after card, but inside this fragment. And same thing for this one. We also need um, states to store all this like values. But the difference between the add new task model and then updating the existing one would be for the new one these fields are empty for the existing one we need to uh, fill this out with the task fields so title initial value would be title which is passed as props same for the description and i guess for the id we're not really like updating id that's handled by Prisma. And as for handle task create, this function would actually be handle task update. And then we're also going to rename the title, which should be updated task. So let's create that function now for the update. Calls. This is submit, so that prevent update task once again, pass variables. We need to pass the ID so it knows which um, task got updated. And then close the model. Yeah. Let's also add, so since we only have button for like one button for submit here, let's say rename this for update, but we also need a way to um, delete the task. So that's why I'm going to use like an icon on the right side of the model, just 